Chapter 16 As Stanley entered the rec room, you could hear X-Ray's voice from all the way across the room. See what I'm saying? X-Ray said. Am I right or am I right? The other bodies in the room were like little more than bags of flesh and bones, dumped across broken chairs and couches. X-Ray was full of light, laughing and waving his arms around as he talked. Yo, Kingman, my man, he called out. Stanley made his way across the room. Hey, sign on over, Squid, said X-Ray. Make room for the caveman. Stanley crashed on the couch. He had looked for a hidden camera in the shower. He hadn't seen any, and he hoped the warden hadn't either. What's the matter? asked X-Ray. You guys tired or something? He laughed. Hey, keep it down, will you? groaned Zigzag. I'm trying to watch TV. Stanley glanced uncertainly at Zigzag, who was staring very intently at the busted television screen. The warden greeted the boys at breakfast the next morning and went with them to the holes. Four dug in the holes and three tended to the wheelbarrows. Glad you're here, X-Ray, she said to him. We need your sharp eyes. Stanley spent more time pushing the wheelbarrow than digging. Because he was such a slow digger, he carted away the excess dirt and dumped it into the previously dug holes. He was careful not to dump any of it in the hole where the gold tube was found. He could still see the tube in his mind. It seemed so familiar, but he just couldn't place it. He thought that it might have been the lid up to a fancy gold pen. KB could be have, have been the initials of a famous author. The only famous authors she could think of were Charles Dickens, William Shakespeare, and Mark Twain. Besides, it didn't really look like the top of a pen. By lunchtime, the warden was beginning to lose her patience. She made them eat quickly so they could get back to work. If you can't get them to work any faster, she told Mr. Sir, then you're going to have to climb down there and dig with them. After that, everyone walked faster, especially when Mr. Sir was watching them. Stanley practically ran when he pushed his wheelbarrows. Mr. Sir reminded them that they weren't Girl Scouts. They didn't quit digging until after every other group had finished. Later, as Stanley sat sprawled down across an understuffed chair, he tried to think of a way to tell the warden where the tube was really found without getting himself or X-ray into trouble. It didn't seem possible. He even thought about sneaking out at night and digging in that hole by himself. But the last thing he wanted to do after digging all day was to dig at night, too. Besides, the shovels were locked up at night, presumably so they couldn't be used as weapons. Mr. Pendanski entered the rec room. Stanley, he called as he made his way to him. His name's Caveman, said X-Ray. Stanley, said Mr. Pendanski. My name's Caveman, said Stanley. Well, I, I have a letter here for someone named Stanley Yelnuts, said Mr. Pendanski. He turned over an envelope in his hands. It didn't say caveman anywhere. Uh, thanks, Stanley said, taking it. It was from his mother. Who's it from? Squid asked. Your mother? Stanley put it in the big pocket of his pants. Aren't you going to read it to us? Asked Trumpet. Give me some space, said X-Ray. If caveman didn't want to read it to us, he didn't have to. It's probably from his girlfriend. Stanley smiled. He read it later, after the other boys had gone to dinner. Dear Stanley, it was wonderful to hear from you. Your letter made me feel like one of the other moms who can afford to send their kids to a summer camp. I know it's not the same, but I'm very proud of you for trying to make the best of a bad situation. Who knows? Maybe something good will come out of this. Your father thinks he is real close to a breakthrough on his sneaker project. I hope so. The landlord is threatening us to evict us because of the old door. I feel sorry for the little old lady who lived in a shoe. 
It must have smelled awful. Look, from both of us. What's so funny? Zero asked. It startled him. He saw Zero had gone to dinner with the others. Nothing, just something my mother wrote. What's she saying? Zero asked. Nothing. Oh, sorry, said Zero. Well, see, my dad is trying to invent a way to recycle old sneakers. So the apartment kind of smells bad because he's always cooking these old sneakers. So anyway, in the letter, my mom said she felt sorry for that old little old lady who lived in a shoe, you know, because it must have smelled bad in there. Zero stared blankly at him. You know the nursery rhyme. Zero said nothing. You've heard the nursery rhyme about the little old lady who lived in a shoe. No. Stanley was amazed. How does it go? Asked Zero. Did you ever watch Sesame Street? Stanley asked. Little Zero stared blankly. Stanley headed on to dinner. He would have felt pretty silly reciting nursery rhymes at Camp Green Lake.